30,000 people infected and more than 11,300 deaths. Ten years after the biggest Ebola epidemic ever seen, where are we at in the fight against the virus and what has changed for patients? To understand, we need to go back to 2014. Following a surge in cases, an Ebola epidemic affecting West Africa was declared at the end of March by health authorities in Guinea. The virus, which has a mortality rate of up to 90%, spread across borders, first to Liberia and Sierra Leone, and then to other countries, destabilizing already fragile health systems. This was unprecedented. For the first time, Ebola represented a threat to rich countries with the risk of an outbreak. And it was precisely at that point that funding for research and development increased dramatically. In 2018, when MSF teams responded to the 10th Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo, they were equipped with new tools, including two vaccines and five experimental treatments. In November 2018, more than 40 years after the discovery of Ebola, the first randomized controlled trial of four treatments took place in North Kivu. The results published the following year demonstrated the efficacy of two candidate treatments for Ebola. In spite of these advances, two-thirds of patients infected with the virus died in the 2018 outbreak, and the virus continued to spread for more than 18 months. In the field, changes also took place in MSF's operational response. In 2014, in a climate of fear and misunderstanding among the local population, patient care was centralized in large, closed treatment centers. The main objective being to rapidly reduce the spread of the virus. These treatment centers fueled all kinds of rumors. This then evolved towards a decentralized approach in smaller centers close to communities with the aim of treating patients, co-infections or comorbidities while waiting for confirmation of their diagnosis. This approach allows patients to be treated as early as possible to improve their chances of survival and prevent them from transmitting the disease before being treated. The possibility of injecting patients with drugs previously prohibited because of the risk of exposure to the virus allows them to be treated, hydrated and fed. Vaccination is also becoming possible during outbreaks with ERV-EBO, the only Ebola vaccine whose use is recommended during an outbreak and which can be administered with a single dose. Recommended for ring vaccination, i.e. vaccination of people who have been in contact with an Ebola positive person, together with these people's contacts, ERV-EBO halves the mortality rate among people infected with the virus. Rethinking the strategy for combating Ebola from the point of view of the people concerned means rethinking the isolation and treatment of patients, identifying and monitoring people who have been in contact with a patient infected with the virus, raising awareness among the population, safe and dignified burials, active search for patients and support for healthcare. To take one example, the structure of treatment centers is changing and plexiglass partitions allow families to see what is happening inside. Body bags also have transparent windows to allow the deceased person's face to be seen. And through a system of mobile clinics, care is brought directly to patients in health centers within communities. Implementing an integrated response thus fosters greater acceptance of Ebola-related activities by the population, encourages early reporting of symptoms, and facilitates the identification of suspected cases. Today, 10 years after the biggest ever Ebola outbreak, while there have been real advances in medical and social terms, significant challenges remain in the response to the virus. Firstly, both vaccines and treatments remain extremely expensive. Secondly, access to treatments and particularly their affordability are left to the goodwill of the private corporations that own them and to national governments. The United States has built up its own emergency stockpile for Ebola, which contains almost all of the treatments currently available worldwide. At the operational level, other questions continue to arise due to the unpredictability of outbreaks. How much room will the governments of sovereign states be prepared to give foreign players in countries where Ebola arouses suspicion amongst the population. How many doses of vaccines and drugs will the pharmaceutical corporations and the governments that own them be willing to donate or sell and at what price? <laughs>